Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode I hope to get the Rocky 2 and Bullwinkle B into orbit around Minmus, uh, get them situated, and then I want to transfer two Kerbals from the Moon to Minmus because we need more Kerbals in the operations around Minmus and we're really not doing so much around the Moon right now. So uh, best to redeploy them a bit. Uh, of course we don't have the fully trained engineers and scientists that we really need uh, around Minmus, but we can work on that later on. We'll just get some Kerbals to do the work for now. Uh, I've also noticed that we can do a transfer to Drez a lot earlier than we can do Eve, Jewel, and Duna. So I'm going to try and build some craft for Drez uh, to help with operations there. And Drez would be a good middle ground. If you take a look, we can potentially uh, have stuff stop over at Drez on the way to uh, Jewel and Elu and refuel at Drez because it's sort of in the middle of the system and so instead of going straight from Kerbin to Jewel and Elu which is a little bit more difficult we can have them stop over Dre at Drez and refuel. That's just an idea. It's not strictly necessary because the Kerbal system is so uh, so small really that uh, the benefit is just uh, minor but if we're going to send really heavy vehicles to Jewel and Elu maybe that'd be a good idea so I'll think about that and uh, I, because I'm thinking about doing that and I need to build some craft I will probably be trying to keep this episode short so I have some spare time after recording this in order to do that building okay so that is the plan and of course the last episode was quite long so I'll try and keep this one as tight as possible uh, so I can proceed with uh, building some interesting craft with infernal robotics and all that will hopefully uh, capture people's imagination. It's been a long time since I built something like the orange or, you know, uh, yeah, I want to aim for something more like that. Okay, so we are oriented for our next maneuver. I've uh, got the stuff in Kerbal Alarm Clock. We're doing adjustments in lunar orbit in order to uh, sort of make our way over to Minmus, though it doesn't seem to be reading the Minmus side right now. That's a little bit worrying. Sometimes when you exit the game and re-enter it, uh, it changes things. Uh, I hope it hasn't changed things that much. Okay, here we go. Still not really showing what's supposed to happen around the moon. Let me... Okay. So things have changed. Okay, I'll take it from this window because it looks like it's a very touchy sort of maneuver. And so we'll, we'll hang out in here. Wait for Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. And throttle. Uh, okay, so what's happening is it's actually showing me that I'm going to come back around and swing by the moon again. You'll remember I ended up with a cycler orbit last time though it seems like a really weird one that's something I should look into if I have time soon uh, trying to figure out these cycler orbits but for now I think that's an okay approach to the moon we'll get as close as possible uh, it's not even sure what my orbit is so let's leave it be and switch to the Bullwinkle B. And here we are with this ship carrying Melford, Dunnery, and Macbill. Still not enough though, we need far more crew. And uh, yeah, probably need to train them up a bit. But anyway, let us adjust our approach to... It looks like we've got a bare Minmus encounter there, but we could do better than that. Looks like we didn't get much biomass out of stuff. Whatever happened to that process? Hmm. It's gonna be tough making a lot of biomass, it looks like. Yep, missing inputs. 25.3% uh, efficiency. Uh, which is, I mean, it's not great, but uh, it means that the best we can do is four times what we got here, which is four. So, uh, that's not good based on I carried a okay load of inputs there we go situated about the same way okay let's uh, add some alarms here 
So for SOI change, yeah. And then you hop back over to the Rocky and do the same. You know, it's a bit late for it now because we're already on the outward leg of our Mooner swing by, but it would have been a smart idea to transfer the Kerbals right here. And instead of uh, having them transfer to Minmus on their own, if I was going to send two Kerbals from the Moon to Minmus, maybe I should have had that vehicle dock up with, uh, with the Bullwinkle here instead of sending it separately. Probably wouldn't have made that much of a difference since this is already on a, on a moon to Minmus trajectory which the other craft would eventually put itself in anyway. Uh, and the Delta V to a transfer from moon to Minmus is trivial. But uh, yeah, maybe it'd just be a more interesting thing to do. But miss that chance. We're already uh, close to our SOI change so I'm just gonna head on out here. Okay, so we're approaching Minmus SOI with the Rocky 2. And technically the Rocky 2 does not need to be in the same orbit as the original Bullwinkle because it's going to be landing on the surface first. And only afterwards rendezvousing with the Bullwinkles. So, yep, but uh, let's see where it gets to here as soon as the alarm passes. Yeah, probably doesn't matter for this vehicle. This is just going to land. So uh, let's get it into orbit first. It really should be in orbit where it can mine the water and minerals. But that should be pretty easy as long as we're in an inclined orbit. And there we go. So yes. And that leaves us plenty of spare fuel. Oh, I forgot we need to bring these stages back as well today. Lots to do actually. Okay, there's Minmus. And here we go. KJR and Retroburn. Okay, well, we can get into a lower orbit. We've got plenty of spare fuel, unfortunately. Okay. Otherwise, it's fully fueled. Looks like it. It's got its own engine there. Alright. Check decoupling is proper. Okay, let's decouple. Let's switch vessels and uh, before the Bullwinkle B moose gets in I can get this on its outward bound trajectory. 2,500 meters per second. We could transfer this over to Joule. But uh, yeah, well one thing at a time. What the? We've got an asteroid passing by? What sort of asteroid is that? Well, uh, let me get this on its outward bound and then we'll take a look at what kind of asteroid that is. Okay, we'll set that up for now. Kerbin periapsis, 22 kilometers or so. And then we'll fix it later on. Probably not going to be doing too much fancy with this. Trying to land it back at the KSC. Probably not worthwhile at this point. That takes a lot of time and I'd rather put that to other uses. Okay, 29. Sounds fine. Let me just watch to see that we clear out of the mission. Yeah, we do. In physics range and in out of physics range. Alright, let's go to the tracking station and see... That's not the asteroid we're trying to wrangle. What asteroid is this? It looks like a Type C. And we've got a lot of little tugs around orbit around our... our planet. So maybe we should just send the tug out to grab it. Just for the heck of it. I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, quickly. Let's see if I can plot it quickly. If I can't plot it quickly, I'll just turn back to the Bullwinkle B Moose and get on with business and let this one pass. But if I can do it in good time, I'll uh, send that on its way. Oh, great. This, uh, this Space Tug Gamma actually still has the launch stage attached to it. Well, that's an interesting thing that I didn't expect. We gotta bring this back down. It's got fuel and all. 
It's even got its second stage still. I I don't want to. Well, I guess I can try and no. There's no point in trying to plot right now. Uh, well, let's bring the first stage back down. Okay, quickly, quickly, let's get on with this. Uh, looks like the staging is correct. I'll turn Smart ASS off to avoid any quick turns when we're close to the payload, and separate. So weird that I didn't bring this back. I guess I must have been tired after whatever episode I launched this in. Okay, uh, whoa. This is, oh, that is fairing, 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 fairing. There we go. Okay, so uh, quickly bringing this back, hoping to get the funds back. And then we'll proceed with things. So much to do, so little time. Um, where is the KSC? I still haven't, yeah, there's the landing marker. Okay, I was about to say, did I still fail to plant a flag there? I'll wait one orbit and then do it. Okay, here we go. Unlocking the tank. Let's just have Smarty SS bring us retrograde. Still got electric charge after a single orbit. Going for 135 degrees east as usual and then retro burning. We certainly have enough to bring this back without any problem. Uh, the question is well, the whole landing part of it, probably. 25 kilometers might be a little bit low. We're at 120 kilometers, though. So... Hmm. <laughs> uh, here again, I have to wonder exactly what number I should be going for. But uh, maybe... Maybe 27? I'd rather land in the water than land on the mountains. So... Okay, we'll go with that for now. Let's just go around quickly. Okay, here we go. Getting flame effects, sun on the horizon. Uh, so are those menacing mountains right there. You can sort of see the coastline here. Still seems a little bit low. We'll see. Our trajectory looks like this, so it doesn't look too bad right now, actually. Maybe we'll overshoot. It's just those mountains with the sun in the background makes it look look low to me. Oop. Standard exploding stuff. There's some sort of decoupler here that's overheating. Right at the top there. Okay, what was that now? Ah, oh, procedural nose cone burned up from overheating. That's a surprise. Haven't seen that one before. Those are the ones at the bottom of the tanks. Huh. I guess because of the steeper trajectory from 120 kilometers, they became vulnerable. Well, there's the KSC right there within 100 kilometers. Looks like we're going to pass over the... Well, I don't know. We're at 20 kilometers only. The mountains are right here. We're uh, barely going to pass over, if anything. We're not going to get all the way to the KSC. So, this sort of thing again. There's a nasty little peak right there that's trying to get us. Once we get straight up and down, I can try to avoid it a little bit, but not much. We're coming a little bit south of that peak. But there's still rough terrain all over this place. Come on, let me turn vertical somehow. No. This is not going to be pleasant. Uh, 
Oh boy. Uh, parachutes, I guess. Gear such as we have it down. This isn't even vaguely as flat as you might think it is. Uh... This is like this. We're hopeless, basically. Uh, yeah, we're hopeless. There's no way. Doesn't matter. There. This is gonna be a bad idea, I'm sure. But that was just going to be a disaster anyway. Uh, this doesn't look like a particularly flat place either. Nope, not so much. Eyeing that suicide burn countdown. It's gonna be particularly suicidal this time. Can't even get this upright. Ah, uh, too early. Oh wait, the probe core survived. Some panels too. Apparently a parachute. I'll have to clear all this debris up, otherwise it's gonna create monumental lag on every other mission. Okay, uh, well, uh, recover vessel? Well, I can at least take comfort that I wasn't planning to recover that thing anyway. Uh, doesn't seem like we recovered parts. That's strange. We definitely saw parts there. But it's not showing me any parts recovered. Okay, anyway, let me clean up the debris and then we'll continue with uh, checking out if the space tug can rendezvous with that asteroid. Okay, I don't think I can do the burns quickly enough to meet up with this asteroid. Uh, I've got three nodes plotted. Uh, first, uh, 400 meters per second burn out so that we get some distance from Kerbin before doing a uh, very drastic plane change. You can see our orbit is like this. Uh, the asteroid is swinging by in a sort of polar direction, so we basically have to kill all of our orbital velocity, which I do in the second burn, uh, which does the inclination as well as keeps us in orbit around Kerbin, because, of course, if you do an inclination change like this, you can end up uh, going to escape trajectory. Uh, so 2,238 there, and we've got it. But uh, the problem is, by the time we get to uh, any sort of rendezvous burn, you can see... Uh, here I have a potential intersect one, but the asteroid's already over here by the time I get over there. And, uh, you know, I could burn faster and faster trying to hit it, uh, but uh, it's just not worth it because then once I get to the asteroid, I'm going to have to slow down again. And so it's just uh, quite, a, quite a laborious sort of thing to grab a Class C asteroid. I don't think there's a, a good target for us, so I'll pass on this asteroid for now and we'll wait until a more opportune target to grab one. Okay, so now on to the Bowinkle B Moose. Okay, so here we have the Bowinkle B Moose on its pass near Minmus, and we need to get that into orbit, and this time specifically into an orbit that matches the Bowinkle A Moose, and so I'm gonna have to finagle that a bit. As you can see, it's nowhere near that approach just yet. We have to make sure that 
we are going around the same way, which is probably not the case right now. Anyway, I'll plot that up and then uh, show you what I've got. Okay, this looks like a better pass around, assuming that the Bullwinkle A is going around in this direction, which we'll soon see using this relative inclination indication. And, uh, yep, so, and then we'll fix the rest of the inclination at our periapsis where we're going to get into orbit. So that would be ideal, assuming I've got the, the rotation of it right. Yep, it's uh, going the right direction. Okay, but the main goal is to make sure that at our periapsis we can do the inclination burn as well. That that looks that looks about right. You can see the periapsis touches the target's orbit right there. Okay. Okay, after Kerbal joint reinforcement, we'll get going here. Okay, looks like a 0.44 is the best I can do from this location. Burn maybe a little bit earlier, a little bit late. I'll have the payload do the rest of the correction itself at some other time. Let me get the second stage off and on its way. Okay, there we go. Swing out from this point and it seems to be good on the Kerbin side. So we'll wait two hours and then we'll go. Okay once again we're sort of aimed directly at our mission but again a little bit below it so I guess that's all right. Here we go. Okay 30 kilometers sounds fine. All right, and so we still got uh, 12 days till Drez, so that's good. Um, let me bring these stages back home, and then I'll work on the transfer from Moon to Minmus of two Kerbals. All right, so I'm not going to do any fancy stuff. We've got a periapsis of 27 kilometers, and wherever it lands, it lands. Uh, time is now more precious to me than funds. So here we go. Okay. So a panel retraction. Well, there's going to be a lot of heat since there's a direct return sort of thing. Not trying to get into orbit first. But we can manually slow down using our thrust. We're not too far from the KSC if we wanted to come down here. Maybe I should. Oh, overheating there. Oop. Except for the overheating thing. Let's calm things down a bit by not having the engines going. Just a little bit there. Still overheating though. I'll just shut them off. Mm, they're still overheating. Could be too steep for them. Okay, well, we lost the aerospikes. It was just too hot this time. So we have to get into orbit first, but we can't uh, come straight down from Midmus. Not entirely concerned about the rest of this, honestly. Though it's probably pretty pricey. Oh, what exploded there? Uh, oh, joint between radial attachment point and advanced reaction wheel module. Large, failed due to aerodynamic stress. Oh, we're, we're going through aerodynamic stress issues here, huh? So I, I don't think we have any control over this now, do we? We just lost the controller. I don't think we can deploy parachutes. Yep, so much for putting the probe core on the side like that. Definitely should have put it on top. 
this will be important for returning because this stage is eventually going to be transferring stuff over to Duna and it's not going to have much fuel left over when it comes back to Kerbin. So uh, maybe a reconfiguration of this stage ahead of those missions to Duna and Drez might be in order. Yeah, I don't think uh, from Duna or Drez they'll have quite the same ability to to uh, slow itself down into orbit or anything like that. It could air break into orbit though. Well, spacebar for parachutes not working, so I guess I'll have a bunch more debris to clean up. The de debris definitely causes serious crippling lag, by the way. Um, don't know what the cause of that is. I mean, why it should, even if it's just a little wing piece or something. But uh, there it is, so I'll have to clean this up. And then we'll... Oh, well, maybe there won't be so much to clean up. Anyway, uh, I'll try and bring the second one down a little bit better than that. Okay, so with this one, we're coming in on totally the wrong side of the planet. But we are higher on our periapsis, and this time I'm not going to intervene. So hopefully the engines will survive this time. Well, the entire craft will survive this time. But we shall see. Okay, retracting solar panels. And that will leave us with uh, six hours worth of battery battery life which is more than enough so let's see what happens thinking about it uh, instead of just transferring uh, Kerbals from orbit maybe I want to pick up one from the base uh, in that case it's gonna take a little bit more time because then I'm gonna have to land the rescue rescue craft at the base uh, pick a Kerbal up and then uh, bring them over to Minmus instead of just going straight from orbit to Minmus. Oh, why have you stopped Kerbal? Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, so going straight from uh, orbit to Minmus will be relatively quick, but uh, doing the surface uh, pickup is probably going to take a little bit more time, so I'll probably do that in the next episode. So what I plan to do is I'll start building craft for, for Drez, and then I will also be sending... we have a probe in orbit around Kerbin already to scan for resources so I'll send that probe over to Drez as well we won't have to send a different probe and but we'll have other resources to send over and uh, probably a Drez station of some sort as well as uh, something to survey locations around Drez uh, in other words uh, do contracts of that kind and probably a return ship just in case we want to bring Kerbals back that sort of thing same same sort of setup as we had around Duna except probably a little bit more robust we should be able to land some assets on the surface of Drez so I'll work on that and next time we'll uh, complete the crew transfer from Moon to Minmus as well as show off those vehicles in preparation for launching them and probably we're going to launch them on the Maximus X though I'll have to take a look at the vehicle because uh, it is getting a little bit tiring returning these stages. If you haven't uh, already figured it out, uh, I'm getting a little bit tired of the tedium of uh, bringing these back down. So yeah, I, 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 maybe I want to create a new launcher that uh, is straight up SSTO one stage bringing it back down instead of bringing back two. Or in the case of the Maximus X, I believe we, we try to recover three different stages for each launch which uh, will be painful. So I want a big SSTO launcher that can handle this business with some time efficiency. Now, uh, with our funding uh, at 5 million, I think what I want to do is focus on craft that will make things simpler on me in terms of time so I can get more done in each episode rather than trying to uh, save funds. So that's something on my mind right now, and hopefully I'll come up with something before the next episode. All right, but let get, let's get this down, and then uh, we'll consider that more as things progress. So let's hope that the engines survive this time. They'll probably overheat somewhat. I think the aero spikes always overheat. Yep, here we go.
This is going down. Oh, there they go. Huh. Bringing it back from Minmus seems to be a much more volatile process than even bringing it back from the moon. I, I think we've brought these back fine from the moon. Um, doesn't look like Minmus does it any favors, though. Should go higher though. Obviously, I'm going too low. And this is going to be coming straight down on the opposite side from the KSC, so minimal return of funds. Uh, controller has survived so far, but we'll wait for aerodynamic failure to decide whether that's going to be a definite thing or not. And people have noted before that this stage with the aerospikes isn't exactly the way that the aerospikes are meant to be used. I put the aerospikes on mainly because I hadn't used the aerospikes very much. So, maybe just ditching this idea of using the aerospikes in this stage would be a good idea. Uh, check out if they're, if it's the fact that the aerospikes have a lower heat tolerance than other engines, maybe some other engine would be better. Okay, well, it looks like the controller has survived, so we're going to be able to bring this portion back at least. Uh, I hope the fuel doesn't make it too heavy. I don't think so. Uh, well, I don't know. I think it does generally need engine power to keep it safe. But uh, then again, these lander legs are very expensive, and the reason they're very expensive is because they uh, are resilient, so we'll see that. Hopefully that'll help us out. Okay, we're below the speed of sound. Parachutes. And... They seem to be alright. Landing gear. Okay, 7.5 meters per second is a bit dodgy, but I think it'll be alright. Let's see. Alright. Right there. Okay, recover vessel. All right, and so, yeah, 21.8%, not great. Really, in terms of uh, recovering stages, this episode has been a dismal failure, but part of that is I think I'm just tired of seeing the Maximus stages. So, need to come up with something a little bit better and something that will take less time to return. Uh, obviously, a space plane would take more time to land. Um, we need something more streamlined. But I also need to cook up the Dres mission, so we'll see. Uh, we'll probably it, it. It's probably not a good idea to build the launcher around the payload. Um, I might. Bu I'll build the launcher. Maybe a set of launchers. Uh, something new. It's been a while since I've uh, tried out a new new launcher system. So yeah, I'll think about that and come back to you with the details in the next episode, and we'll do a crew transfer in the next episode. Maybe we need some more uh, crew transfer stuff going on and perhaps some crew training. We need to train up our Kerbals. Lots to think about as usual. And so I'll be back with you with that next time. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.